Hello and welcome back to Enerati. Um Thanks for all the support you've, you're giving Enerati. It means a lot to me and also motivates me to make more videos. Um, today we're going to be looking at a very, very interesting concept or, uh, or topic called amplifiers. I've been eagerly waiting to get to this uh, right since the start of uh, me making videos because it's absolutely interesting. I love it and I hope I will make you love it too. <laughs> okay, so we've all at some point of time in life come across this word called amplifier. Uh, what is an amplifier? Well, an amplifier, I mean amplification in itself is, 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 is enlargement of a small thing. You know, it's an exaggeration or it's a magnification of a small thing is amplification. Um, a very classic example that I could provide right now uh, off the top of my head is um, binoculars. They're very useful in amplifying images of stars and planets in the sky in, in the night. Um, to do what? Well, you see a small dot in the sky and you look at it and it says, okay, this is Jupiter and not Saturn, or it's a star and not a planet, or vice versa. So, it enlarges this image into this big thing. To do what? Your eyes look at that image and process it in your brain to understand, to, to perceive what the image really is, correct? Likewise, um, even telescopes do the same thing. If you want a different example, I could also uh, give you the example of, uh, whoops, this looks very bad. Suppose this is our foot and we get hurt somewhere. And it pains, right? So if you look at it, it's a very interesting concept. The nervous system in the body that extends to all parts and then finally I mean, branches from the brain towards all the parts of the body, it, get, it, it senses there's something unusual about this part here in the foot, and then transmits a signal, transmits this weak signal to the brain as pain, right? And that is when your brain knows that there's something bad with the body. So what does it do after it knows that there's pain? It either sends antibodies to go and, um, uh, you know, warrior cells to go and uh, uh, provide for remedies there in that hurt place, or it at least tells you that you need to take some painkiller, right? So what we understand from here is amplifiers are mainly required to um, make you know what problem or if there's any unusual stuff happening. If there isn't, it's always nice to keep recording whatever uh, regularity your circuit is following. So basically, if you have a very weak signal coming from somewhere, an amplifier amplifies it and helps you process that signal to be, uh, to be able to use somewhere. Okay, now that we know what amplifiers are and why we need them to be able to process it, Let's build our own amplifier. Uh, the thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to actually build it from scratch and not just take it off of a textbook so that we intuitively know how amplifiers are designed. Before we actually dive into amplifier design, I want to make a small note here. Till the device physic uh, device classes, we were looking at shapes that looks like that look like this uh, for the MOSFET gate source drain stuff though although this design really helps in understanding the basis of what happens inside of MOSFETs it's not going to be very useful when you come to circuit design when you come to amplifier design so we are transitioning to symbols this is the gate this is the source and this is the drain the arrow here shows that it's an NMOS and not a PMOS um, we will also be using small signal models 
as uh, I hope you've seen those lectures. That's a very important thing. If you've not seen the previous lectures on basics of MOSFETs, you will find it not very difficult, but slightly confusing and out of place if you're just landed here. So I request you to watch them before you actually dive into these topics. So, so we're familiar with uh, small signal models as well. Um, let's go and actually build a MOSFET, I mean an amplifier. This is the symbol of a MOSFET again. This is the gate. Um, after some time I won't be really writing the terminal names. You have to be familiar with them after some time. And um, what do we know about a MOSFET? When we give the gate an input voltage, of uh, any voltage, it converts that voltage into a tangible drain current. One more thing to note here is I'm going to be talking in terms of conventional current and not electrons because electrons help in understanding device level um, about MOSFETs but not circuit level. I mean they do but it's slightly difficult when you come to the circuit level. So we uh, deal in terms of conventional current which is opposite to the flow of electron current so instead of going from the source to the drain for electrons, you're going to be coming from the drain to the source with conventional current. That said, an input voltage at the gate gives you a tangible drain current, right? We also know that uh, transconductance is a measure of how well the input voltage is converted into the drain current, right? So. All these are coming from the previous lectures, so I just hope you're thorough with them. We'll, we'll be deriving, I mean, we'll be um, um, uh, deriving a lot of uh, previous known stuff from the lectures. So I hope you're ready. Um, okay, so let's say this device right here has to amplify the input voltage. Okay, that, that's our requirement. So here I have an input, the source is grounded, so where do I take the output? It's obvious I'm going to be taking the output off of the drain. There's no other terminal left actually. <laughs> but a MOSFET has to be given a principal power supply which is generally given to the drain. This is grounded. And now if I put a V out here, and I'm saying that V out is the output of this amplifier based on the changes in the input, it's gonna be it's we're gonna get an amplified output. It doesn't make sense if we use this design because V out is directly connected to VDD. So no matter what your V in, your V out is always gonna equal VDD. So what's missing here? Try and think about it while I draw the rod sketch for the next improvement or improvisation in this little design. To break that direct connection between V out and VDD so that V out just doesn't copy VDD all the time, we need to bring in something here. And that's something is a resistance and we call it RD because it's connected to the drain right so why have we brought this resistance in so that we break the otherwise direct connection between VDD and V out and if we have a direct connection V out will never follow V in it'll just be a copy of VDD right so we want to avoid that that's why we bring in RD that's it. Here's your amplifier. You have designed your first ever amplifier. Congratulations. And this is called a common source amplifier. Why is it called a common source amplifier? Because here's your source. And this is your V in. And this is your V out. Uh, okay. 
So V in and V out have a common ground so source. So that's why it's called a common source amplifier. Let's go ahead and draw the uh, small signal model for this. Is, is, wasn't this design just intuitive? We just came up with the design without thinking much. It's amazing. That's how electrical engineering works. It's intuitive. So I would really appreciate it if you picked up a pen and drew the small signal model before I complete it. That'd be really amazing. That'd be really cool. Um, let's see. Hmm. GM times V in. Instead of VGS, it's V in because the V in is the voltage we're providing here. And one more thing about small signal models is all VDDs become ground, right? So, and this is, we know that this is the drain. So, there is a resistance RD from the drain to the ground. The ground because VDD becomes a ground when you come to small signal models. That's it, you have a small signal model here. And this is so easy to understand, isn't it? If it's not easy to understand, that means you've not watched previous lectures. I request you to do so before we continue. Now we have derived the basic intuitive designs. We're going to sit down and do the equation stuff in the next video. So stay tuned in. Thanks.